Hello, hello, guys. Happy self care Saturday. How are you? Listen, y'all was probably expecting David's Bible study. <laughs> hello. But I actually have a word to share with the wives today from the Lord specifically. And so um, I want to come on really fast on this self-care Saturday. How y'all doing today? How are y'all prioritizing y'all stuff on this self-care Saturday? How are you taking care of yourselves? Look, I know my lighting is not good from this angle. Um, I'm having a solo morning. No children are in the home. I'm actually here alone today. I know I usually have my youngest son here with me morning, for the most part, um, Saturday mornings. But I've been doing some administrative work all morning. I've been preparing her buoyancy booth boxes. Have you guys signed up for your her buoyancy booths? Listen, I've been doing all this stuff. Packaging boxes and cutting and putting stuff together, putting orders together. So it's been one of those type of mornings. But, but in the middle of that, in the middle of that, I always try to keep my spirit in tune with what the Lord is saying. And so for, I want to say since Wednesday, Wednesday, um, John 15 has been weighing in in my spirit. John 15 has been weighing in on my spirit. And so I want to come and share with you for a quick moment on what I feel like the Lord um, is saying to the wise today in this area. And this is more for the wise who have been on this marital restoration journey for a little bit, who are like, I ain't seeing the fruit. <laughs> like, I ain't seeing the fruit that I feel like I'm producing, Jesus. Like, you know, I'm planting the seeds. I I'm doing these things. And I am not seeing the fruit of this. And I heard the Lord say today, big fruit, much fruit. All right? Big fruit, much fruit. And so I want to talk to you from John 15. We're going to come back to David Bible study. We ain't getting away from David Bible study. But right now, I just, I'm really been trying to really hear from God when I do come in um, on these days because of my schedule. I don't know if I'm going to be able to come on on Fridays or Thursdays or so I'm trying to get it in when I can get it in. And so I can get it in on this self-care Saturday. So let me say a quick prayer. Father, we bless you. God, we love you. We thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace, God. Lord, as always, I thank you for a revelation and confirmation, God. I thank you, Jesus, for bringing awareness to your wives. And I pray now, God, that this word reaches the heart to the wife who needs to receive this, God, now in your son Jesus' name. I pray, God, that this word will unite her. I pray, God, that this word will uh, motivate her. I pray, God, that this word will uh, bring about uh, change in her life, God. I pray, God, this word will bring about revelation in her life, God, so that she can make the necessary changes that she needs to and adjust to what it is that you're saying, God, right now. Lord, I bless you and I thank you in advance as I pray and ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, I'm hurry because I need to take, it's, it's getting close to lunchtime. It's actually already lunchtime and I have been thinking about like, cause you know, you can, you can eat like this when you don't have to worry about like getting food for the kids. So usually I have to be selective <laughs> when you getting food for the kids and you know, for the family. But when it's just you, you can be like big, big, uh, hungry. You can like, you know, get big stuff for lunch. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to eat for my lunch on this solo self-care Saturday. Like I'm going to tend to myself today. All right. I I'm going to read from the Bible today. I'm going to read from the Bible. I normally have my notes in my computer, but I actually wrote some notes down because I was sitting here and I'm going to read to you John chapter 15 verses one through eight. And this I'm reading from the New Living King translation. Um, any tra translation that works for you, you can do that. But I want to just read to you and then I'm going to basically um, share with you what I feel like the Lord shared with me after I read this. Okay. And so it says, Jesus, the true vine. This is the, you know, what this verse is, this, this chapter is about on these verses. Uh, John 15, chapter, John 15, um, verses one through eight. I am the true grape vine and my father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not 
produces fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they produce even more. You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the, from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my father. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. And these are actually the words of Jesus. These are actually Jesus' words. Anytime you read in the Bible and it's read, this is Jesus speaking to us. Now, when we talk about the fruit, of course, the fruit that he's referring to, if we go back to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, it talks about the fruits of the spirit. You know, you got love, patience, um, Goodness, let me go. Look, let me let me go read them. <laughs> let me let me go back to it. I ain't I haven't read it in a long time. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. Um, these are the fruits that he's he's referring to. But I want to just I want to just go there myself and um go over those with you so you can know about this much fruit. Okay, Galatians five verses twenty two to twenty three. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay? So those are the fruits of the spirits that Jesus is talking about in John 15 verses 1 to 8. And I was doing a session on... Um, this week and that's what it, it felt on my spirit it felt on my spirit um i was talking to a young lady and it was basically you know this young lady has been doing the work like she has really been in tune with what god has asked of her she has really been in tune with you know falling through with the steps she has really been in in tune with um you know staying you know staying the course uh walking with jesus you like you know uh turning the other cheek you know uh walking in that unconditional love um, doing these things, doing these things and still, still, um, had been struggling with, still had been struggling with not seeing the result of her labor. She still had not been receiving it. Now we know that it's not about what we do. We can never outwork, uh, God, you know, we can never outwork it. So it's not about, oh, I'm going to do all these works to get my, to get my results. That's not how that goes. Okay. And the Bible does tell us faith without works is dead. So if she was not doing these things, if she was just sitting there, just believing God and taking him at his word and nothing else, then we would say, well, well if you're not doing your works, then, you know, you kind of like are really not exercising faith, but you have to also understand it's not about doing all these works. And it's like, okay, I've been doing all these things. So now because I've been doing all these things, I should be seeing, you know, the results. But that's not what that's not that's not what Jesus is explaining to us in chapter 15 of John verses 1 through 8. He's saying that God, the gardener, he cuts off every branch that does not produce his fruit. And even when that branch produces fruit, he prunes that branch and he prunes that branch so that it can bear more fruit. So it can bear more fruit or produce more fruit. So this that's just say, okay, you know, Jesus been watching you, you know, um, like Lord, you know, you see, you know, they they down there, they doing their thing, they they walking in excellence, they they walking in unconditional love, they've been turning the other cheek, they've been, you know, um maintaining this journey, they've been doing what you asked them to do, they ain't had no attitude, they ain't they ain't turning up the lip and the eyebrows, they kinda like doing what they supervisors been asking of them, they kinda like answering the phone calls from their husband, even though he's being disrespectful, they still being nice to him. Like God, like they've been producing some fruit. 
And so God says, okay, all right, well, let me go and look at it myself. And so when God, the gardener, comes and look at it, he say, hmm, yep, I see that you've been doing some things. I see that you've been producing some root in these things. Let me cut you up here a little bit here. Let me add you up a little bit here. Let me add you up a little bit here. And now that I did that, let's see about you bringing back more fruit. Okay, and so this person goes back out there and they they doing the same thing. Now they they working in the ministry. Now they out here they uh, evangelism. They out here you know telling people about Jesus. They out here you know being kind and nice to their family who be getting on their nerves. <laughs> <laughs> they out here, they reading their word, they getting up early in the morning, reading the Bible, and Jesus go back to God like, Jesus, you know, they they really been doing their thing, they've been really being consistent, they've been getting up every morning, saying their prayers, they've been, you know, uh, getting up, you know, on schedule, and keeping their keeping alarm set, and actually keeping their time with me, like, they've been really doing, they've been really doing their thing, and God said, okay, all right, let me go, let me go take a look at it, let me go and examine it, and so the gardener, he goes, and he look at it, and he's like, yo, okay, I see some areas, okay, you done grew a little bit here, okay, I see you walking in exercise, walking in exercise a little bit up here. Okay, I see, I see a little self control and came through. All right, I see a little patience and came through. All right, I see a little, little, um, little, um, goodness and came through. All right, all right, let me prune you some more. Let me prune you some more. So he cuts and cuts and cuts and cuts, and then he see you on back. All right, so now you out here like God, like. <laughs> How many more times I got to keep on doing this? And this is the, this is the ongoing thing. It, this happens. It happens. You know, you can go back and forth and, and Jesus, he's up in heaven. He's, you know, uh, rooting for us. He's like, you know, come on God. Like, you know, you see them, they doing this, they doing this, they doing this. And then, you know, now, now all of a sudden that person's like, look now. Okay. <laughs> now Jesus, you go tell God I said, <laughs> I've been walking in self-control, okay? I've been walking in goodness, okay? I've been very patient on these streets, okay? Now, I'm getting frustrated over here. Now, I need you to go tell God that I need to see some of this fruit that he's been saying is supposed to come because I've been doing my part. So, Jesus is like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm going to go have a talk with God. So, God be like, mm-hmm. All right, he listened to Jesus. And Jesus said, you know, God, they really getting frustrated. They really getting, they really getting tired on this journey. They've been really trying to, you know, maintain this, this, this Christian lifestyle. They've been really trying to maintain and, and really be faithful they've been really trying to maintain and they keeping their temptations and stuff under control they've been really trying to maintain their attitude and it just feel like like god like can you like just do something to let them, just let them know that you are really really moving on their behalf and god looks at jesus and saying mm, no i'm gonna set that for a little bit longer <laughs> So Jesus now got to go back to like, listen, I'm praying for you. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm up here repping for you. Listen, I'm still calling your name out before God. And he has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about you. But you got to continue to maintain this. God is trying to see something in you. He's trying to, he's trying to get something in you. In you. And so now they like big mad, but they like, okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to keep on doing these things. I'm going to keep on walking this wall. I'm going to keep on journeying on this path of being a Christian. Even when I'm getting, you know, uh, uh, spit in the face, even when I'm getting, you know, all kinds of hits and whips even when i'm seeing all these little different things coming for me and it's like i know i'm too far out here now to even try to go backwards i'm too far out here to even go backwards now i'm out here so now i have to really kind of like it's either do or die right now <laughs> sink or swim type of thing so now i'm like okay god okay okay jesus can you please go to god again and ask him what about now like i've been out here i've been maintaining this i've been persistent i've been enduring it i've been just showing up i've been keeping keeping the faith i've been standing on the word i've been meditating i've been doing these things can you please jesus can you please go back on my behalf and see what god has to say and so jesus go back to god and be like jesus i'm god come on i'm, I'm coming to you again on this on their on their behalf they, they they still doing these things they still maintaining they done took a course now now they're trying to they, they're trying to work on they work on themselves they're trying to get healthier they're trying to improve themselves in this area is there anything else that you you know that you that you that you need from them because they, they're saying that they've been doing these things and, and nothing has happened and god says like well let me go back out here and look let me just go out here and look and he just looks and looks and I'm like okay i see them grew this area oh okay you're not so attitudes no more. Oh, okay. Oh, now you can control your tongue a little bit. Oh, okay. So God said, all right, clip. <laughs> and now instead of him clipping certain areas, he just pinched a little area. It's like, clip, all right, now send him back out there in the field. <laughs> and now they back out here in the field again like, oh my God. Like, I know he did. <laughs> like, God, you don't see what I out here doing? You don't see him out here maintaining your name? You don't see him out here being an ambassador for you, God? You don't see me out here, like, 
really showing up for you. You don't see me out here representing from the kingdom. You don't see me out here doing my thing. Like, really, God? Like, what is going on? Like, how many times I'm going to have to keep on walking this thing? Like, how many times I'm going to keep on doing this? And so now, now, Jesus go to them again. Like, you know what? I'm going to give you a little advice. I'm going to give you a little advice because I am the uh, the great by this thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let you represent and, and, and just be, you know, let me be your model. Okay. So you just, when I move, you move. Okay. When I do this, you do that. Okay. You just follow my example. You just follow my example. And no matter how tired you get and no matter how many times you feel like uh, uh, you going astray, uh, uh, things are going astray, no matter how many times it look like it ain't nothing happening, I want you to just keep following me. So Jesus basically He's telling this person, like, just, just follow me. And as long as you follow me, I guarantee you when I go back to the father, he is going to not just see you, but he's going to see me first in you. And now he's going to say, they ready to go. All right. So just, just follow me. Just follow me. So the person's like, okay. <laughs> okay. So now Jesus out here, he out here, he doing things. He, he, you know, he feeding, he feeding the, uh, the homeless and he, and he laying hands on the sick and he out here delivering and he out here, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, letting his enemies, you know, do him any kind of way. He know that uh, his enemy is coming for him. He letting the enemy do him. And now he done, now he said we got to go to the cross. And so this person like we got to go to the well <laughs> to the cross. You want me to do what, Jesus? I got to follow all these examples. Jesus like this is part of the process. Like this is part of the process. You got to like walk with me on this. You got to really, really walk with me on this. But, like, but Jesus, I ain't know that I had to go to the cross too. Like you already went to the cross. You already <laughs> done died. For us, you already did that part. He's like, yeah, but everybody has a cross. The Bible tells me in order for you to, in order for you to have life, you got to lose your life. In order for you to have more life, you got to lose your life. So you got to really like lose your life on this journey and not even be paying attention to what you want and your needs and what you feel like you desire. You got to really just follow me and like really, really imitate me on this journey. So the person's like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep on you, Jesus, but I don't know about the nails in my hand, okay? I don't know about this this blood and stuff running all down me. So now they get to their cross. Now they get to their cross. Now they carry their cross. They carry their cross like Jesus carried his cross. They carry their cross. They like Jesus carry their cross. Like, Jesus, do you really think that, you know, the 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 the, the Father is watching? Do you really think that, that, that the gardener is watching us on this? And Jesus like, he got you. He got you. I got you. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. Keep following me. Keep following me. And so you following Jesus. You following Jesus. You carry your cross like Jesus carry his cross. You carry your cross like Jesus carry his cross. And you get a little bit of like, Jesus, like, this thing is really getting heavy. Like, you know, the more and more we walking out here in these streets i'm really seeing this thing is really really getting serious and jesus like just keep following me just keep following me i'm telling you i'm telling you we're going to get you to the other side we're going to get you where you're supposed to be at and so now you following jesus and now jesus get to the place where they finna get ready and hang him up they done laid him all out and stretched him wide they did all these things now you seeing jesus go up on the cross and he finna get you no know, go go down for our saving you like what I'm supposed to do right here, <laughs> like what I'm supposed to do right here. Jesus, like you just stand right there. You just stand like right there and be a be a witness to what's taking place right here. You stand right here, just like John and my mother stood there. You stand right here and just be a witness to what's taking place because God is gonna get ready and use you. Come on, Jesus, in a major way. God is getting ready to do something because you don't walk with me. You've been following me. You've been rocking with me. You see what I've been going through. You see the things I had to endure, and you've been doing your part as well. And now you have come to the finish line with me. You have carried your cross. You have got to this point. And God got something he want to say now. He got something he want to say. I'm finna go on up here because I done did my part. Now it's time for you to do your part. You've been watching me. I've been your example. You've been following me. So now all those things you see me doing and all those things that you have been seeing me doing, this is how you're going to keep on producing that much fruit that he's been asking you about. And now when you go to him and you ask him for anything, it's like, boom, you can't have it because you've been imitating me and you've been watching me all this time. Okay? So... Now we're going to give you the response. After, after, after I read John 15 verses 1 through 8, this is why I feel like the Spirit of the Lord said. Okay? First, he broke it down to Jesus is the true great vine. Right? Jesus is the true great vine. God is the gardener. Okay? You are to follow the example of Jesus Christ. Right? You are to follow the example of Jesus Christ. The gardener, God, cuts off every branch that does not produce fruit. 
And that's what he was doing. The lady was going like, come on, Jesus. Like, you know, tell God, like, I've been doing this. He looked at you, cut, 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 cut. Send it back out there, all right? So the gardener cuts off every branch that doesn't produce fruit. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit. All right, I cut, cut, cut here. Shape you up here. Shape you up here. All right, send them back out there. Send them back out there. All right. So he prunes the branches that do produce fruit so that they will produce even more fruits. Okay, even more fruit. You, child of God, you, daughter, you, wife, have already been pruned and purified by the gospel. You have already been pruned and purified by the gospel. I have given you, okay? So therefore, you remain in me and I remain in you for you will not be able to produce no fruit unless you remain in me. So you have to understand, you the the the, the only way that you're going to ever be able to produce this much fruit is by remaining in him. If you try to start doing things your own way and your own strength, you're not going to be able to produce this much fruit that he is requiring of you. And the only way you're going to be able to produce that much fruit is if he is in you and you are in him. Okay. So he said, I am the vine and you are an extension of me. Okay. Now we already said that the vine is Jesus. Jesus is saying, you are an extension of me. You are to follow me. You are to follow my example. I am the vine and you are an extension of me. Okay. The branch. So you remain in me and I in you. So you can produce much fruit. I keep on emphasizing much fruit because a lot of times on this journey, we're thinking that we're doing these things. We're doing these things. Oh, I already prayed. Oh, I already been fasting. Oh, I already been doing this. I've been reading my books. Oh, I've been doing my devotions. Oh, I've been spending time with God. Oh, I've been sitting in God's presence and nothing is happening. But you have to understand something is happening. Something is definitely taking place if you're doing these things and you're being consistent on this journey doing it. You have to understand Fruit is being produced. Maybe not much fruit yet, or maybe not the fruit that God wants or knows that you can produce, but it's something happening. It's something definitely being produced, okay? So he said, if you remain in me and I in you, you can produce much fruit. Because if you don't, if you don't, you will not be successful in anything you do. You won't be successful on this journey. You won't be successful on this marriage restoration stand. You won't be successful in life. You won't be successful on your job. You won't be successful in your business. You won't be successful in anything. You won't be successful as a mother. You won't be successful as a, uh, as a sister. You won't be successful as a daughter. You won't be successful if you do not remain in me and I remain in you. Okay? So you won't be successful in anything you do. And anyone, anyone who has ever tried to do anything outside of me, Anyone who has ever tried to do anything outside of me because uh, on, on their own and their own strength became useless to the kingdom. They became useless to the kingdom. You're not able to produce much fruit in your own strength. You're not able to produce much fruit on your own. All right. So they became useless to the kingdom and they end up going astray and burn into ashes they end up going astray or they end up returning back to the world or they end up returning back to the things that they used to do or they end up going backwards or they end up start doing the same things that like, they used to do or they end up in cycles they end up doing the same things over and over again because they tried to get away from me being in them and them being in me okay but but if you remain in me and my words remain in you you may ask for anything you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted why would it be granted? It will be granted because you now have produced much fruit. You now have produced much fruit. And like you have consistently done that. Now you have done this consistently. I know in the big beginning stages, it may not have to. I know the first month, like, okay, I'm standing. It ain't nothing happening. Okay, it's been a year. It ain't nothing happening. Okay, it's been 13 months. Okay, it ain't nothing happening. But God said that consistency that consistency is what's going to get you to that place, okay? So now because you have been consistent, you have now produced much fruit. And you have been consistent by doing so. You have proven you are truly my disciple. You, are, you have proven that you are truly my disciple. And that brings me glory. That brings me glory, okay? The only way for you to get to that much fruit place, that is when God can say, boom, I can, I can use her now. Boom, I can do something with her now. Boom, she finally got it. 
Boom. Not now she get it. Boom. She have finally let go. Boom. She have finally she have finally understood. Boom. She got that revelation. Boom. She now gets it. This is not just about her marriage and her and her husband come back together. Now she understands that she is out here, not just out here get, getting to this place uh, uh, for her marriage, but she's out here getting to this place because of me, because she's ready to work for me. OK, you had many times, many opportunities to give up wife, to throw in a towel, but you kept going anyway. OK, you had to understand those times you be like, I am not doing this today, Jesus. <laughs> when you do the clap, clap, like not today, Jesus. All right. <laughs> you have to understand God sits back and he sees that stuff and he admires that. Even though you had already said what you weren't going to do, but you continue to make a decision to do it anyways. God is saying, OK. All right, I see you. Okay, all right, I see you. Then another time they come back around again, you be like, oh my God, I don't want to do this no more. But then you still get up and make a decision to do it anyways. God's like, all right, mm-hmm, I see you. That's that much fruit I'm talking about right there. That's that much fruit I'm talking about, okay? You did not give up even when you had opportunities to throw in the tower and had other options. You kept going anyway. You were persistent and diligently seeking after me. And now your awards wait you. Your award awaits you. Okay? So, God wanted me to tell you wise. God wanted me to tell you wise. Tell the wise to stay slash remain in me and I remain in them. To be persistent and never stop coming after me concerning their marriages. Not, oh my God, can you fix my husband? Oh my God, can you please fix my marriage? Oh my God, can you please fix this? That's not what he's saying. Yes, I want you to come to me concerning your match. I want you to come to me concerning your, your husband. But I don't want you to be consistently coming to me only for those reasons. I want you to say, Lord, create in me a clean and righteous heart, a pure heart before you, God. Lord, help me to see what I don't see, God. Lord, correct any places and errors in me that's not right. Lord, fill me up with your spirit on today. Lord, order my steps, God, so that I may honor and serve you. Lord, who is it that you want me to bless and touch today? Lord, who is it that you want me to speak life into today? This is what God is saying. I want you to be consistent on this journey. Keep coming to me. Keep coming to me. Keep coming to me, okay? And as you keep coming to me, and I see that this ain't just you about you idolizing your marriage. This ain't just about you just, just looking to your marriage like, oh my God, in a few minutes, he's going to be home. He's going to be on and popping. No. God is saying, you ain't just talking about your marriage and your husband. Oh, now, you are coming to me because you want this restoration. Because you want these changes. Because now, you say, I need whatever I need on this journey so I can be whatever God wants me to be because I don't no longer want to keep on doing this somehow. Jesus like I don't, I don't really want to keep on doing this like if you want this marriage to work now it's gonna have to work because you want it to work if you want this marriage to survive now it's gonna have to survive because you want it to survive if you want me and my husband to come back together God you gonna have to do that but in the meantime I need you to fix me I need you to work on me help me to remain in you and you remain in me help me to continue to keep coming to you come on keep on pruning me keep on making me right keep on making me better keep on making me see things that I don't see keep on having giving me understanding with things I don't understand I need you to help me you have to get to that place why when you like i am no longer looking to god just for the restoration of my marriage but i am looking to god for the restoration of me like i need god to do something in me okay and he said tell the wife that tell them to be persistent in me be persistent because it's in a persistency that they can come to me and ask me for anything including their marriage don't ever stop believing what i have promised you he said i want you to tell them Tell you, tell the wise, I am the God who keeps his promises. Come on, Jesus. I am the God who keeps my promises. And it takes much fruit, wife. It takes much fruit to get in these big boy parts. Come on, Jesus. It takes much fruit to get in these big four parts. And because in these parks, in these parks is where your restoration resides. In these parks, you have to have big, big fruit to get in these parks. But once you get in these parks, you will be able to maintain it and handle it because you've been coming after me. You allowed me to be in you and you in me. All right. And so listen, I hope that message has touched you. Come on, Jesus, because it just hit me again. <laughs> it just hit me again. Like he just said it to me all over again. Come on, Jesus. I want to encourage you, wives. I want to encourage you, wives. Yes, God is for your marriage. Yes, God wants your husband and you to come back together. Yes, God has made a promise to you and he has said some things to you concerning your marriage. But more than anything, more than anything, God said, 
I want you. I want you and me and me and you. I want to be a part of you. I want you to be a part of me. I want you to walk on this journey with me and let me let me restore you. Let me do some things in you. I want you to get this much fruit that I want to offer you. All right. I want you to get this fruit. So on that note, I want to encourage you, guys. I want to encourage you. If you have not, sign up for your heart bonus booth. Like I said, I am packaging stuff right now. I am packaging stuff right now. If you have not signed up for your Herb Bonnie's Moves, listen wise, sign up today. Sign up today. You can sign up for your consultation at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. Listen wise, make sure that you are prioritizing yourself. Make sure that you are doing something for yourself today. Make sure that you go outside and get a little sun, all right? Make sure that you do something for yourselves. I will see you guys on the other side, all right? Have a good day. Blessings.